Hi, this is Jim Bergman with Redfish Instruments here today on behalf of Subco TechLink to give you a little bit of a demonstration about the differences between service voltage and utilization voltage and why they matter. And also show you uh, a point at which we might need a, a start assist device if the voltage gets too low. So in this case right here, what I've got set up is um, I've got a, a window air conditioner. It's got a capillary tube on here. This is very typical to a residential type unit that you might see um, where they have either capillary tube or fixed orifice. And the interesting thing is with this type of unit is it takes a few seconds to equalize. So what I've got here, I just got a, uh, the meter set up. I'm going to head, go ahead and hit connect. And uh, the app just takes just a second to find the meter. It goes, goes ahead and connects and we have a uh, millivolt reading. I have a line splitter installed on here, and line splitters are also available through Subco. This just makes it really easy to test any device that plugs in. We can measure current around these two um, openings, and right here I've got a place I can put my leads to measure voltage. So right away you can see I have 121 volts here, and I'm going to go ahead and we'll start a, uh, a service voltage test. So I'm going to select service voltage, select my nominal voltage, which is a nominal 120, and I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And you can see right away, it tells us the high and the low range, 112.8, 127.2 on the high side. We're right at 119.5, so we're really right in the center where we should be, and everything looks great. Um, if I go ahead and expand this here, you can see we're right in the center of what our, uh, of what our, our service voltage should be. And again, this is just a test that we would do with a system in the off, uh, in the off mode. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop here and record that. And the difference between a, a service voltage test and a utilization test is the service voltage is what do we have delivered, uh, what's the electrical pressure coming out of the end of this cord right here. There is no flow right now. We haven't started the unit up, so it's just sort of sitting there. And now what we want to do is actually test it under a flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink that back down. I'm going to actually do a utilization test this time. Utilization is a little bit different in the fact that, again, the unit is going to be on. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue, and you can see we're back at that 119 volts, but our scale changed slightly. So now our utilization voltage, we can go all the way down to 104 and all the way up to uh, 127.2. So we're going to go ahead and start this unit up here, and uh, the unit starts up right away. You can see our voltage had a small drop in there down to 117.2, but it's still well within the acceptable range of the allowable service voltage here. At startup, we dropped down to 112.1 but we're right back up right away. Now, let me show you what would happen. This is a very typical thing that can happen is we'll shut the system off, and if it doesn't have enough time to equalize, it'll have trouble restarting. So I'm just shut it off for just a second. I'm gonna turn it back on, and you can see the compressor stalled and our voltage dropped all the way down to 104.4 volts. We have this long stall period here. We'll see if it's gonna even be able to restart before it trips the overload, and there it went ahead and restart on the, uh, on the system. And this is where you might want to look, if you had this type of a problem where you're tripping the breaker or causing the lights to flicker in the house, where well you might want to look at installing a start assist device. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the power here, and I'm going to install a, um, an original uh, Subco Super Boost, and we're going to show you the difference in the, uh, in the uh, startup on this. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this off. Now I just tripped the power, and I'm just going to take just a second here. We'll install this start device across the common terminal and across the hermetic terminal of the capacitor. And again, it hasn't had a lot of time to equalize here, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll start this right back up again. I'm gonna reset the GFCI. And you can see right away, we still had that little grunt, but it started and immediately we had two things that happened. Number one is we didn't have near the voltage drop and we almost had an immediate start. Again, looking at our graph right here, our voltage dropped down. Um, if we go ahead and tap on the bottom one here, our bottom voltage here is about 106, 105.2 actually is what it says there. If I tap up here on the minimum, if I can get it down there, it dropped down to 113.1. So you can see that we had a significant, it's so narrow right there, it's actually hard for me to get my, my finger on that, but 113.1 versus down here, it dropped down to 105.1. So very significant, an eight volt difference in the, in the, in the uh, voltage drop. So this will really aid us in not making the lights flicker in the house and solve some of those starting problems that we, we might see and you know maybe even stop us from tripping a breaker on a, uh, on a uh, really hot day. 
But anyway, this gives you an idea of what we can do with the Supplico TechLink app. I'll go ahead and hit stop here. Again, I can view that test, save and record that. So we know that we have our utilization voltage. Everything fell within the right range. This gives us a, a great opportunity to show the customer the improvement that we can do. And the, uh, the, the TechLink app communicates that very well. This is Jim Bergman for Redfish Instruments and Subco TechLink. Thanks a lot for watching.